Welcome everyone to Let's Play Okami HD Episode 42. I'm your host, Ultra Director Jester. And as we left off, we were on our way to Waku Shrine, which is essentially the end of the game. Well, actually, right now we're taking Lika to go to the volcanic incantation to keep this terrible blizzard from blowing Komui into another ice age, I guess. But this is essentially the last real dungeon of the game. This is this really is just a final test of everything that you've learned. And we're also going to be getting our last brush power in there as well. Right now, Kamui is a complete and total disaster. The best you can do right now is just kind of head north or so. Yeah. It's really not worth exploring all the way right now because it's almost impossible to, especially if you uh, go a little bit too far. About to demonstrate. The game just puts you right back to where you need to go. So, we'll head on our way up to Webkir, and then to Ezofuji, and then on to the last mission, the last real dungeon of the game. Not really much to do in this town right now. I mean, the merchant is available, but uh, we'll talk to him a little later. We've already got everything that we need anyway. So, time to remember how to get back up there, because this can be a little bit difficult to navigate. Especially, again, with everything being so fucking impossible to see with the blizzard and all. I don't even know where I'm going anymore. So, okay, there we go. Just continue to head on up there. That's the old man's place. Back on through here. Not much to say here. Exciting! about to find out, I'm certain. So, alright. No one is here right now, unfortunately. Where did everyone go? Well, they're at Waoku Shrine. Of course, it's going to take quite a while to get up there. The shrine door is open. Somebody must have gone in. Now, gee... I wonder who'd be boneheaded enough to just jump on in there, throwing caution to the wind, endangering everybody and fucking everything up for everyone. I wonder who it could be. So, of course, Oki has pretty much doomed the world to total Ice Age status. Uh.
Oh, he's actually noble. He's just got stupid misplaced pride in himself. That's what we need you to do to save everybody! Go for it! <sighs> oh, while that's going on, let's head on in. Finally, without further ado, God damn it is soon! Want to get to the let's play already? Come on, we've kept the people waiting long enough. We know this already. Well, I guess this could serve as a refresher. You know, I got a feeling it probably does have everything to do with anything. Well, welcome to Waku Shrine. Finally. Took us a while to get here, but now we're finally here to begin the final exam that the game gives you. This is probably my favorite dungeon in the whole game, I think. Just because of how... how much layers there are to it. It's very deep, very fun, and it's great. Take it slow and easy. We got these cannons over here that shoot random ha ah, cannonballs your way, and oh, they hurt like crap. But you can do a veil of mist, and then you can just power slash those things the back the way they came. It ain't even no thing. Oh, I got that other one too. Great. Ah, shish. Ah. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, ice will definitely hurt a lot, because there's a lot of ice that hurts you in this dungeon, it being a hurdy dungeon of ice. Where the cannons stand are two chests. One on the right gives you ruby tassels. Another treasure to add to our list. And the other one, the more important one, gets a stray bead 97. This dungeon holds the last three dun the last three stray beads of the game, pretty much. Well, by that I mean Stray Beats number 97, 98, and 99. You get the Hunter Stray Beat at the end of the game. But here we are. There's a lockjaw over there, so we'll head to the right down this icy path. Gee, I wonder what our last power is going to be. I hope it has something to do with... Um... Gravy. Ah! That was just a mean trick. And there's two of them, so that way you get hit twice. And there's gonna be a lot of really strange roadblocks here. Really, really strange, because you have no idea how this works at first glance. But, here's what we can do first. First, we're gonna have to want to melt these two ice things. There. We gotta make the right side and the left side equal. Hmm. 
what they give you over here are three special plants. They turn into trees if you bloom them, and you can chop them down if you want to move them again. I say move because you can bite them and take them over here. They give you three, but really you only need two. Seriously, you only need two. Put those on there. Bloom both of those. Your weight doesn't count because you're too light. And with that, we can move that ice ball into that switch. Seems easy enough. I don't know why they put that skull here. Probably just for decoration, I guess. Gives a certain level of hopelessness to the shrine, I suppose. So we'll use Galestorm to move it because it actually does hurt. Which is ridiculous. Whoa, fuck. If you drop it, it just comes right back. Gotta make sure it's angled the right way, of course. Whoa. Let's bring it back here a little bit. I don't like you going off the edge too much. And hey, that's exactly what we need. Yoink. And don't forget to watch out for these two things right there. Avoid that guy, because fuck that guy, I guess. Oh, I should also mention that the ice breaks behind you. But if you go fast enough, you should be alright. Anyway, through the door we go! Hooray! Alright. This one's pretty easy, just go ahead and melt that. Just seeing if you remember all the powers that the game gave you, which of course we do. Use Waterfall for this. I mean, the only way you really have a problem with this is if it's been like two years since you last played and you just decided to beat it and you're like, Oh fuck, what does that do again? But sometimes they throw you a little bit of a curveball here and there. Like, right over here, I think. That ice shit hurts like shit. You really can't make your way up there, but you do have to go up and hey, what was that up there? Oh, how lovely. It's a cat call statue just out of the camera's reach. Crafty bastards. Like that. And oh. Ooh, that was close. Alright. They have cannons over there, but it's really difficult to really hit them because the camera doesn't really give you a really ideal method of taking them out. Besides, it's more fun to do this. You need to have Veil of Mist anyway. If you want to get on these correctly. And you'll be moving fast enough to avoid all those other projectiles. Well, most of them anyway, if you're any good. It's okay. Is that the end? Right up here. The switch that you can just press and it, well, stops those in case you fall. It destroys the cannons automatically. That's pretty handy. This brings us to the Golden Gate. A pretty important part of the dungeon right now. We've got an origin mirror there. We've got, uh, ooh, these nasty things. Might get hurt, I'm gonna guess that we will get hurt. And over here is a door that has some kind of weird mechanism that we can't understand because it's just a hole. Hmm, I wonder how that works. That'll come in handy later, so the only place that we can go is down this hallway. Use Veil of Mist again. Keep an eye on your time because you really don't want to fall. It'd be kind of hard to misjudge this distance here. Then, 
You see something up there? I believe there is something up there. Double jump and a boost ought to do it. And that just gets you some Kutani pottery. Hey, more money though. A lot more money. Go ahead and melt this treasure chest over there. We get sapphire tassels now. And those four cannons are gonna be a pain in the ass later on, tell you what. Tell you the fuck what. Avoid that guy. Nice free clover. Is this a decent amount of praise? Probably alleviate that praise later on. Crazy ass flame spiders, goddamn everywhere! You can use Veil of Mist if you're really having problems with them. Ah, like I apparently am. And, uh, they do actually cause burning when you touch them, so you can just... Well, I thought you could extinguish yourself with uh, Gale Storm, but I guess you can't. Oh well. Here we have a new enemy! This is the Great Tengu. I would say use your glaive to take him out. Works wonders. Really, uh, using any glaive as a sub weapon certainly works pretty good, especially if, uh, you're kicking this much ass. It's really when he gets into this Swordman phase that things get a little crazy because he's immune to most attacks. And we don't have the special ability used to take him down and really make him, make him vulnerable. But the glaive should be fine. Smith's poison, too, which is pretty annoying. Back already, come on. Alright, a few more hits of the glaive out of doom. And I'm not gonna get a big bonus for this, that's for damn sure. Ah. Probably would have gotten better if I had Veil of Mystical the whole time. Ah, come on. You don't even have its floral finisher, which is the move we're literally about to get. Ah, lame. I can't imagine that. Oh well. Here's where things get really cryptic. Nonsensically cryptic. I guess that's what's causing the blizzard. You gotta give him credit, uh, it's a uh, fantastic workmanship. I'll start by burning the handle. Oop, by burning the handle over here. Yes, handle. Apparently this works for the crank operative. The thing is, all these need to be... This is just a weird-ass device, and the game doesn't really need to give you a whole lot of information. Or does it? Using this cherry bomb over here. take care of this asshole tree first. He's going to distract us. Oh, I burned him. There's... How many asshole trees are here? Anyway, I'll bloom him correctly instead of burning him. That's lovely, okay. And we'll use Gale Storm to blow these away. And then we're given up right and left. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you. The idea with this is that we've got to use Veil of Mist correctly. We've got to use it a few times, actually. And 
could do this until it lines up just right. Ah. Well, dang. I have no idea why that didn't work. There we go, I got it wrong. You weren't supposed to, you weren't supposed to slash the gears, you are supposed to slash the handle. This whole thing is just cryptic and confusing and bullshit. But, with a combination of Veil of Mist, especially to get the quicker third one, you can line them up just right. There really is no time limit, so you can let your ink grow back if you need to. And I'm gonna sleep in my wood mat and recover some HP. Let's save a few snacks. And, I use Veil of Mist a couple times. To line up gears just right, like so, and then boom. Here it is. The last brush technique. Maybe I should stop dicking around. Eh, <laughs> One thing I never noticed is that how the game flat out tells you if you don't get it right the first time, jackass. Well, hey, no time to mess up this easiest part of the game than right here and now. The third time a god has tried to kill her. This is Itagami, the stower of the final brush technique, Blizzard. His name derives from Iteru, which means to freeze. He carries a conch horn which is commonly used by monks of Shugenja and Yamabushi in spiritual pilgrimages. Did you hear that, Amy? We finally got the Master Sword! This time is special because now that we have obtained all 13 of the brush powers, we get probably one of the best weapons in the entire game. Uh, yeah. Feels like all that padding at the start was worth it almost. Almost, not quite. But that is the solar flare. Solar flare! flare! No, 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 no. Well, maybe. So now the flame spiders ain't shit. So this really just means that we can harness ice now, and hey, when you get back on the frame, please? And... Thank you. So 
So instead of just using Water Spout to, uh, you know, put out the fire, this freezes them entirely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't you worry your pretty little head off. It's something to consider. You can recharge your frozen objects because they will, of course, go back to not being hot. And we get another trophy for our troubles. And this one's a little special. Let's see if I can do this right. Get all three of them at once. Jump there. Then jump up here. And let's see. Wait for them to wiggle a little bit. And then jump up and... Let's see if I can time it just right. Well, maybe not. Okay. You now cool myself off by hurting myself with ice damage. And then, will I, I'm still burning? No, I'm not burning. Because what the solar flare does now is you can have firepower. But we don't need fire right now. We need ice to freeze this goddamn spider. Because there is something special up there that we need to really try a little hard to get. It's a little tricky. You need to get the timing just right. But it can be done. There we go. As he's doing that, he can get another source of ice and freeze him right there. That added boost should be enough to get you up here to get Stray Bead 98. Man, that one was a tricky one. One more Stray Bead to go in this level. And there's still a lot more in this dungeon to go. Because now that we have the blizzard power, we can now take- Ah, oh, shit. Hmm. Anyway, now that we have the blizzard power, we can now take care of that blizzard, that flame spider that we saw earlier. Can't talk anymore. I'm using all my brain power to- Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm like using all my brain power to get this done here. I really hate these guys. But we can just use a solar flare to take them out most of the time. We can't. Veil of Mist certainly works. Well, with your new uh, reflector. There, now I think we can hurt him with the fire. There we go. That could have gotten a little better. But hey, this brings us back out to the main area. The origin mirror. The flame spider's up there and a source of ice. Neatly set for us so we can make our way to the second part of this dungeon. And that does it for this episode of Okami HD, and we'll see you next time.